My name is Frank. I'm, a, I'm a majoring in chemistry with a concentration in biochemistry. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my project entitled Structure Determination of Outer Membrane Protein A by Integrated Lanthanid Binding Tag Small Angle X-Ray Scanner. And don't worry, we'll get there. But uh, <laughs> essentially, this project is grounded in biochemistry. It's sort of the study of the way that organisms interact and manipulate matter. And, and within biochemistry, it, within its seated within the field of structural biology, sort of studying the physical form of life and how it affects its, uh, and the interplay between its form and function. So I want to talk a little bit first about this idea that's very important in structural biology, the idea that form precedes function. So in a, in a natural system, norm, in the process of reproduction, small variations will occur randomly. And these, uh, these changes normally, that are normally physical can either help or hurt an organism in terms of its evolutionary capacity to pass on its, to reproduce and pass on this variation. So this diagram on the left demonstrates that if you have a population that has these variations in it, if you apply this sort of triangular selection pressure, the uh, triangular organism will be able to outcompete the square in the pentagon, and you'll eventually end up with a, with a population of only triangular organisms. So the central idea of structural biology is looking at this triangular organism and sort of and making inferences about how it developed that way and if you want to, if it's a biologically relevant organism, you could sort of look at how you can disrupt or promote its function. Uh, and structural biology, especially the field, the topics that I'm interested in are concerned with the molecular structure of organisms. So looking at proteins and other biological macromolecules and studying that interplay between their form and function. So I used some words there. Uh, so <laughs> let's talk about proteins for a little bit. Proteins are involved in essentially everything that goes in the cell. You have structural proteins that allow your cells to take shape. And, and from there, you can go all the way to enzymes that catalyze important chemical transformations in cells. Uh, what proteins are, are they're long, linear, non-branched chains of amino acids. There are and each amino acid has one of 20 side chains that have, different, that have differing physical and chemical properties. And in order for a protein to function, that long linear strand of essentially side chains, those are the most biologically important parts, they have to be folded in a very precise way that allows them to carry out their function. And understanding that folding here is the central idea of structural biology. And so within proteins, an important class are membrane proteins, proteins that are found in the membranes of cells. The membranes of cells are what the cell uses as sort of boundaries. There's a membrane between the cell and the outside world, and any compartment inside the cell also has a membrane surrounding it. So proteins that are associated with these membranes are very important for uh, signaling between these compartments, for instance, inside the cell and outside in the uh, outside world. Uh, they can also be involved in transporting things but over membranes, so anything that needs to come into the cell basically needs a membrane protein to do it. And, of course, they can also be involved in the normal chemical transformations that you see in other kinds of proteins. And because proteins have all these important functions, they make up approximately 50% of all drug targets today. They're very relevant in the field of, uh, of in the pharmaceutical field. Uh, but even though they're that important, only about 1% of known protein structures are of membrane proteins. So there's a very large disparity there. And the reason for this, even though they're so very important and relevant, is that current methods of structure determination, understanding that sort of three-dimensional folding, uh, they're unsuitable for membrane proteins. X-ray crystallography is the really gold standard. It, it produces the, most, the highest quality data uh, consistently, most consistently. Uh, but it's very slow and difficult. In part of the sample preparation process is you need to produce very well-ordered protein crystals uh, with very few impurities. And that's a very difficult task. There's no really generalized way to do it. It's very, uh, very empirical. Uh, another major method is nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, or NMR. And it's a little different. You don't need to, uh, there's no crystallography step like an X-ray crystallography diffraction analysis. But it has a very low size limit of proteins that you can study. So that's a very large uh, drawback to using that method. And finally, this method that I'm interested in, small angle x-ray scattering, 
uh, it's based on the same principles as X-ray crystallography, but there's no crystallography step. And because there's no crystallography step, you sacrifice a lot of, uh, a lot of resolution and uh, structural information from spatial averaging since, there, since it's not well ordered. It's essentially bouncing around in solution. So this is a schematic of what a small angle X-ray scattering experiment is. Uh, you have your sample that's suspended in a, suspended in a solution. And you, expose, you illuminate it with a well-contained monochromatic beam of X-rays. And, and those X-rays will be deflected by the electronic structure of the protein and produce a sort of scattering pattern with a detector. And with a, it outputs a data set like this. And based on that data set, you can make inferences about the overall geometry of the protein. Things like the uh, uh, major structural uh, distances and its overall sort of shape. So the idea of my project is, can small angle x-ray scattering be improved? Small angle x-ray scattering, like I said before, is uh, much faster than x-ray crystallography because there's no time consuming difficult crystallography step. And it has essentially no size limit, unlike NMR. So my central idea is, uh, can an improved small angle x-ray scattering provide a tool for uh, protein structure determination. And this is a model that I'm working with, a membrane protein model, outer membrane protein A. So how do I want to improve small angle x-ray scattering? I want to improve it by introducing heavy metal lanthanid ions into the protein of interest. So I can do that using lanthanid binding tags. Uh, what a lanthanid binding tag is, it's, is it's a, uh, small, uh, it's a small protein sequence that you can that can be inserted into a protein essentially anywhere, and it will bind a lanthanid ion with very high, uh, with very high affinity. And so through that, you can introduce a lanthanid ion at a very precise point within a protein. And so why are lanthanid ions, why would they be useful in a small angle x-ray scattering experiment? Well, like I said before, the x-ray in the the x-rays in the small angle x-ray scattering experiment are interacting with the electronic structure of the protein. And essentially, all of the protein is made up of these organic elements, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, with up to eight electrons. Whereas the lanthanid ions all the way down here in the F block, as it's called, have about between 60 and 70. So they will interact with x-rays very differently and produce a much, more, a much stronger scattering signal than the rest of the protein. So ideally, you would be able to see in the small angle X-ray scattering experiment where the uh, where the lanthanid has been localized within the protein. So this general my general methodology was first to synthesize a gene sequence, a DNA sequence that codes for the LVT modified outer membrane protein A. Uh, it has to be cloned into a form that can that a cellular system can recognize and produce. Uh, I have to introduce that form into a cell and have the cell produce this protein. It has to be purified and refolded into, a, really into the uh, biologically relevant form that I would want to study. And then and only then, I can perform the small angle x-ray scattering experiment. So how far did I get? <laughs> <laughs> I was able to code for, express, and isolate lanthanid uh, LBT modified outer membrane protein A. Uh, you can, on the left here is the uh, coding sequence at different stages of the cloning process. And over here I have the isolated protein sample. Uh, the figure's not showing up here, but this green signal represents uh, uh, lanthanid binding due to uh, fluorescence effects. Uh, so refolding of outer membrane protein A was unsuccessful. Uh, this is a very ugly data set that indicates that uh, uh, this, top, this top line is the uh, LBT populated uh, protein and on the bottom here is the protein with the uh, lanthanid binding tags introduced. Uh, with the lanthanids introduced to lanthanid binding tags, excuse me. Uh, essentially this, this curve is featureless and there's no real data analysis that can work up. This suggests that there is a, uh, that the protein is aggregated in solution which is what you expect from a membrane protein that doesn't like being uh, all on its own in a sort of, without being in a membrane, essentially. So in response to that, uh, I worked with a, uh, more, uh, with a simpler system, ubiquitin, uh, that's not a membrane protein. 
and I was able to produce this data, which is much more featured, but because of limitations of the instrument that I used here at BU, uh, I'm unable to tell the difference between uh, lanthanid populated and lanthanid vacant uh, forms of the protein. So in the end, I was able to code for, express, and isolate the LBT modified outer membrane protein A, but refolding was not achieved and I wasn't able to produce any usable data in the uh, scattering experiment. Uh, and so working in the simpler ubiquitin system, I was able to successfully to obtain good uh, scattering data, but the resolution was insufficient to be able to make any uh, judgment on whether or not introducing lanthanid ions improved the experiment at all. And so future work will focus on improving the refolding procedure of outer membrane protein A, and potentially in uh, looking at it with a higher, uh, higher power instrument. And with that, I'd like to open it up to any questions anyone has. This type of analysis at its infancy, is this only something that happens in your lab? And do you see this getting to the point where you could insert that LBT uh, gene at certain discrete iterations throughout your gene, your protein of interest, and then analyze it many, many times and computationally piece together something like tandem mass spec does, mm -hmm. piece together a really, really high resolution image of where that tag disrupts the whole thing? That's a uh Pretty much, yeah. The uh, the small electro scattering, the first part of your question, it's, it's been around uh, for as long as X-ray crystallography has, uh, since about the 60s. It was when the uh, first real practical experiments were carried out. Uh, in terms of, like, the second part of your question is more of like what where, where like the end goal of this sort of technique is. Uh, the real end goal of this would be uh, just uh, less of sort of like the tandem mass spec looking at looking at it in different points of the protein. Uh, it would be very useful to be able to localize a specific part of the sexist envelope, the sort of overall folding shape that you get, to a part of the primary sequence of the protein, the sequence of amino acids. And that sort of information is very useful in, uh, in combination with X-ray crystallography, where you have a lot of trouble with sort of placing the primary sequence of the protein within, this sort of, uh, within the sort of envelope that you get from that. That's where this really could be most useful. Yeah. Thank you.